<laughs> Thank you for that giggle, Kelly. Uh, that was my assistant <laughs> saying, recording in progress. Yeah, we've hired her since, since you've seen us last this summer. Hey, and welcome everybody to Sanctuary Online. It is September 21st and we are back in the saddle for full fall programming. We're incredibly excited to welcome you all here. Uh, I will tell you that we've been busy while you've been um, off this summer on the evenings where uh, we've not had Sanctuary Online every other uh, week this week. We've been actually working on CLM and redesigning it um, in a full way to bring it to the, in the internet and to bring it online. So it's been a, a big heavy lift for us there. But we've, been, we've gotten quite a bit of progress. And we also had a couple nights off as well. So I just want to say, man, I hope you had a great summer. And uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and start things off with our regular PowerPoint saying, just um, making sure again that you remember that tonight is about community. One of the things that Sanctuary we love so much and really stand for. So if you can keep your cameras up on a gallery view rather than speaker view, you can see everybody. And if you would like to go ahead and open the chat box and you can let us know where you're from. I, I believe everybody tonight, we seem to have your email addresses, but if you'd like a reminder, if you did not get a text reminder today from Barb, put it that way. If you didn't get a text reminder saying, hey, it's Tuesday and we're back on Sanctuary Online, you can go ahead and toss your cell phone number into the chat, um, either globally, or you can send that quietly to Barb um, privately. And then she will put you on a little list and she will give you a text every Tuesday afternoon, just to remind you to uh, clear your schedule. We've had an amazing summer. What we did this summer is we, we took every other week on and every other week off. And we spent the summer talking about um, artists and books and just had a wonderful kind of light content level. And so we had an amazing conversation. Edie, you started us off with um, some of your great work, hoping you got some commissioned work from that as well. Um, week two, Jason Hanish was a, an artist that actually um, offered us a painting to, to raffle off over the summer. He was wonderful. Shelly King, who is a, um, a good friend of Sanctuary and also she was on the um, cover of the Rolling Stone. She sang for us and we had a wonderful chat with Shelly. The next weeks we took um, Amy McCarter and Pat Ludwig and we went through the history of quilting. And that may not sound interesting, but it was a really interesting show. And we got a lot of remarks on that one for them kind of talking us through the evolution um, of quilting and just people sent in quilts and we told stories about quilts that were in our families. Had a great time. And Cheryl, I should have had you had your earrings on tonight from Hamila. Um, yeah, the very, yeah. our last artist was Hamila, um, who Edie <laughs> referred to us. And she was wonderful, a jewelry maker with her jewelry pretty much based on architecture. So she had a story behind each one of her pieces. And um, that was our, our artist rework. We also then have one book out of place for some reason. So this summer we read three more books, Broken Horses, This Tender Land, and Out on a Limb from Shirley MacLaine were our summertime books. And we went a little bit lighter, didn't we? Cheryl, why don't you share um, next week we are actually going to talk about Firefly Lane. Any comments there, honey? Well, it's a much lighter book than the last one. Um, it's just about two women who started off as friends when they were in high school and how their friendship has developed over 30 years. They stayed best friends. So it's a pretty cool book to, to watch what happens with their lives on through. Great. And we, we do not have an October book teed up because we're going to wait until we have right. this conversation. Right, yes. and then tee up an October book. Now, how we normally do that is the folks who show up for the September um, book conversation get to bring suggestions for the next month. And then we um, hilariously vote on those suggestions and duke it out until we have a result. And then we go ahead and we spend that time into October. So like I said, we spent the summer and when we weren't reading books and weren't talking to amazing artists, we were working on the redesign of creating a life that matters. Many of you are familiar with that. It's a, it was uh, in the classic version. <coughs> Excuse me. In the classic version, it was 18 two hour long sessions in three different courses. And we're trying to readjust that a little bit, um, especially now that we'll be global 
And we'll also be inviting individuals, not churches. So it's a very different right. Um, not to mention this baby is looking at 18 years old. So it was, it was first designed seven years prior to the iPhone existing on the planet. <laughs> so you really did need a tad, tad bit of updating and that's been wonderful. Um, and I won't, I won't, um, I maybe will tell you a little bit more about that later this fall. Tonight, again, we're kind of easing into things, just chatting about some gorgeous pictures you all have sent in from the summertime. And then the September Book Club is next week. And then in October, we are hitting it. Man, you got to pencil these evenings in. Many of you know our good friend Ken Martin um, is just passionate about human sexuality. He's also a genius around the concept and of human sexuality. And we said, why don't we just, you know, almost in the same vein that we did with the artist, we interviewed each artist. Um, I'm going to interview Ken and really say, where did this passion come from? You know, where did your studies kind of uh, uh, initiate, you know, and what's taken you along that path? So the first night, October 5th, will be kind of an interview um, with Ken, which will be, I think, quite fun because we'll, I'll find some questions that maybe, maybe you all don't know about the gentleman and we will uh, have a wonderful time then. The primary teach night, which with Ken, you always know, it's so jam-packed, but there's so much to learn. And so that'll be a, a heady night. So instead of wine, maybe you'll have a bit of coffee prior to signing on that night and be able to dial in. And then from the 5th and the 12th, we're going to have a third um, evening around the same topic, but really more conversation and Q&A. So any questions that you have for, for Ken that came up from the first two, it'd be great. And also just conversation around those topics. And then as I shared before, at the end of the month, we're going to keep um, on going with our October book club. Once again, that will be um, to be announced here shortly. So Tom, I'm going to yes. start here, here. Of course, everyone had the first question tonight and said, where's Ken? So I wonder if you might share what you feel comfortable sharing about that. Yes, I will. Um, the last two weeks have been a tough one for Ken and I. Um, he's had two surgeries over the last two weeks uh, on melanoma. The first one two weeks ago was on his head, which was horrendous. And then on his neck, uh, he had to sleep setting up and this Thursday, he had to go back again, have his stitches taken out and all is healed well, and then had major surgery with a surgeon on his nose. And I can tell you from looking at his stitches, it's so, gr uh, it's really something. I was gonna say gross, it is. It starts from underneath his nose, goes up the whole side of his nose, and then up the bridge of his nose to his eyebrows. And he also has stitches on the inside of his nose. Uh, thank goodness for modern drugs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Those are over now. He is resting. Uh, he's eating well and sleeping a lot. On uh, Next Thursday, he goes back in and he will have those stitches taken out. And then unfortunately he has one more surgery, but that probably will not happen for one or two weeks. So the moral of the story is keep out of the sun. <laughs> and he has very, very white skin. And this all happened when he was a child. It has nothing to do with what he's done as an adult, but as a child. Yeah. And so that's how Ken is. Yeah, thank you, Tom. And I know that he had a um, a plastic surgeon in with the surgeon, right, to reconstruct yeah. his nose and his yes. face during that surgery. So that's a uh, yeah. Thank you, um, thank you for sharing that. And I really, although I know I am assuming many of you have folks in your prayer list right now from what's going on on the planet. If you wouldn't mind adding Ken and 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 his primary caretaker Tom <laughs> to that list. Most definitely. Ken would have loved to be here tonight. Of course, Mr. Storyteller, I would love to tell you the stories of what they've done all summer, 
Tom, I'm going to lean on you a little bit for that. Okay, later in the in the show, that'd be okay. okay. All right. Well, how I think we should do this, my friends, is honestly, you have sent me so many photographs. I'm glad there isn't 50 people on here tonight. It'd be like a three hour show. So um, just we'll pop ahead and um, I'm just going to go to each person and let you describe what the picture is, maybe even tell a little bit of a story. But once again, if you hold yourselves down to, you know, three or four minutes each, I think it'll be a wonderful night and uh, we'll hope we'll try and get through everybody. Cheryl, I put yours in my last. So if we don't get all the way to us, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> So kicking it off, who sent me the first picture, Darcel? What happened for you this summer, Darcel? Uh, we did an epic road trip. I flew down <laughs> to Texas and picked up Tom and Ken. We rented a, a little SUV and uh, did a four-day drive up to New York State. Had an amazing time. Uh, the picture you see is my brother, Kevin, Tom, me, and that is our Aunt Virginia, who many of you who know us know about the Maple Tree Inn. She and my uncle uh, founded the Maple Tree Inn. And- uh, Thanks, Darcel. Just... I... I'm gonna do one thing, Darcel. I'm gonna go like this so I can manipulate the pictures a little bit and make them a little okay. bit larger, okay? So if you, if you guys don't mind, it won't be quite as, polished a powerpoint but i can get the pictures a little bit larger that's okay sure and dark is 92. yes and getting around well and as sharp as a knife <laughs> isn't that wonderful wow uh, that's wonderful thank you darcel yeah. and follow that up with who else sent me a picture right away cindy yes <laughs> Want to describe have, what's happening here? The looks like some shenanigans on the back porch at Sanctuary, if you ask me. Oh yeah, we had a little bubbly that night. Uh, I had an Thanks awesome road. Show. What? <laughs> had an awesome road trip back with my family. My brother Tom taught me that the Colorado River runs through four of the seven states that we drove through. Wow. Isn't it wonderful yes. that you can learn something every day? I know. That, and that's I... the Mississippi. That's the Mississippi. I thought it was the Colorado. No, honey. Damn it. I should have checked my notes. Oh, Cindy. <laughs> bubbly, you know, like bubbly. Picture and you're going to screw it up, my friend. That's well, <laughs> somebody had to. Oh. You're yeah, welcome. And who, and who else is in that picture with you, Cindy? Oh, Mrs. Mary and Mrs. Denise, and boy, are they, they're a riot. They are nothing a riot. But, nothing but trouble. trouble <laughs> and also, they're the ones that Tom and Ken trust to watch the farm and the animals when they take off and go hooting and hollering in New York for, for a month. So uh, they're wonderful friends to us, and we know that the farm is in good shape when those two are hanging out there. Always. Always. Yes. Always. Well... These, you two, there are some of the most beautiful pictures that I've ever seen. And I tried to make them really big, especially your two gorgeous faces. But y'all went to Montana this, this summer, right? Is that where you went? Sorry, I was slow on the draw. Yeah, we went to uh, Glacier National Park um, and stayed in uh, Columbia, Falls. Columbia Falls, flew into Kalispell and spent a week up there. Wow. Yep, and this picture is of. Help me. It's with the one with the pink flowers in it. We took the gondola. White oh. Whitefish White. uh, Ski Resort. Yeah. So there's Whitefish and Kalispell are the two bigger towns next to Glacier. It's we beautiful. Stay kind of in the middle. Well, this is just a warm-up picture. All right, because look at these. Oh wow. I know, isn't it? Let me do this. I'm going to bring this one big and you can talk about it. That looks like you guys are. Um, We're on a boat. It looks like you're, yeah. Hold on here. Hold that guy. Looks like a, a oh, a boat or a kayak, huh? Beautiful. Yeah, and it's a boat with about, oh, there were probably 15 or 18 people on um, Two Medicine Lake. It's on the east side of the park. 
the boat is actually a wooden boat. It was built in the 1920s and during the pandemic when the park was closed, they took it out of the water, took it to Kalispell, completely redid it. And it looks, it looks just amazing. So we took mm. that little trip. Wow. And that was kind of in the same area, the one that you enlarged now. I didn't take that from the boat, but- um, Just look uh, at the, the reflection. It's just something else. That we did. You know yeah. what, it's this, it looks like you're at a high altitude because the, you know, the trees stop up there in the mountains. Yeah. 11,000 feet right around here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's probably where we are is what, five to 6,000. It's, yeah. it's really glacier is not, unless you're up in the mountains, it's not real high in general. Yeah. yeah. Here's but a couple fun. more from you two. This looks like it's coming out of the mountain. Yeah, yeah, the water flows down into the mountain and then comes out where you see. And then during this, uh, the snow melt in June, which seems late, but that's when the snow melts, the snow melt in June, that waterfall cascades above what you're seeing there down the entire side of the mountain. It just must be amazing. Mm. Yeah. And the one on the right is um, St. Mary Lake. St. Mary. It's St. Mary Lake. And so if you're, there's a road called the Road to the Sun, and it travels east and west, and you drive by St. Mary Lake, and it is, it, it, it just is absolutely stunning. Nope. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. No condos, no hotels, no development. Yeah. Really? It's it's just yeah there are no hotels lined up. This is in the in glacier in the park. So um, there and that's the color of the water. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's that blue. It's fed by the snow and the and the glaciers. And not to be dramatic, but if you're thinking about going there, the the glaciers are are unfortunately they're they're vanishing. They're going away, and that's what feeds the water to be this clear. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So they won't be around forever so um because of obviously global warming so um it's it's just a stunning place yeah and you, you know i tried to look at the pictures and the the crispness and clarity of of, of your pictures and you're just trying to get them large enough on these on these slides so people could see it and i'm sure like everything else when we see this the pictures still don't capture you know any measure right of what we see there the beauty of it um it was it what, did you guys camp when you were there or hotel it or how did what how what did you do because if we have if any of us wanted to put this put this on our bucket list how would you suggest we spend a week out there well as bud said we stayed in columbia falls which is very close to the kalispell airport we actually did an air, uh, an airbnb that was a camper so we had a camper on some folks land that was very near the park and and close to uh, yeah really close to everything uh, oh. close to Whitefish and close to Flathead Lake. Um, and it was just, and then we rented a car through Turo. Um, and that's, that's kind of the way we did it. it was just an Airbnb. We didn't want to do a hotel and that way we were able to have, you know, breakfast food and everything in, in the place we stayed. That sounds great. That sounds great. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Those are gorgeous pictures. Thank you. Jane Ann. You were finally in your new home enough to look like, looks like you had some time to enjoy it and to uh, venture out into your new area. Give us a um, rundown there. Um, <clears throat> just around the corner from me, although this was taken on the neighbor's lawn just a couple of weeks ago, there's a sunflower farm oh. with like masses of brand, breeds of sunflowers, but I was just walking uh, Maya around the corner and this one was on the front lawn of my neighbors and it was like four o'clock in the afternoon and I just kind of caught it. But I spent most of my summer <clears throat> um, enjoying my balcony. Um, I overlook the Irvine River, which merges with the Grand River. So off my balcony is a huge stone bridge. And then over that is the, if, if it, if, there were mountains in the background. It would look like Banff or any one of the photos that you just saw. <laughs> wow. And um, so I have a beautiful view and I, I really did spend a lot of the summer out there. This was probably late July and it got even 
Now it's all got pumpkins, but back then it was. Of course it does because it was lime green, green yeah. everything <laughs> orange. But yeah, I had a really, um, this is my first spring summer in not living in Toronto. So I just really enjoyed it. We walked, I think over 110 kilometers, over 60 some odd miles every month looking at the oh, gardens and geez, taking wow. photos and entertaining. So it was really cool. Where are you now, Gina? From I'm in, in ice Aurora. Cream store, Cheryl. Huh? Yeah. You're an okay. ice cream store. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the picture on the left is called the Wild Tart and um, they serve high tea. And I yes. savory um, tea because it had a zucchini bloss, a stuffed, dipped zucchini blossom as one of the um delicacies and then all the other sweets and stuff but tom's freeze um celebrated 50 years and i love their um orange swirl so how do they do that, that? i i don't know how they do it That's but like it tastes magic. like an orange creamsicle and i'd already taken the top off it so <laughs> um and the, the other one is is uh, <laughs> vanilla dipped in butterscotch with Reese's pieces um, on it. Anyway, it's the oh. best ice cream. And um, I only allowed, that was the only one I had all summer. But oh, that's sure your story, good. Jan. And you stick to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think in this COVID era, anybody would, would begrudge you a, a couple ice creams. You know, I yes. know. <laughs> Especially so, that uh, one. It's, with orange as your favorite color, what a perfect, perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Absolutely. Everything orange. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you again. And yeah, God bless you. getting through the Canadian um, elections. Uh, we did already. Up there. We're done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's so next? Where, where were you? Sorry to tell you. Where were you? Where are you living now? Um, about an hour out uh, west of Toronto, just north of Guelph in a town called Alora. Oh. And it's um it's an artisan town. It's a funky town. It's um it's a tourist attraction because of the Grand River, fly fishing, a lot of artisans. In fact, this next two weeks are the studio artist studio tours where they open their galleries and studios to the public. So the town is, is always Good busy. It's really almost a tourist town, but yeah, I really nice. like it. Good feel. I Thank golfed you, 17 Jan. times, so I golfed oh almost my once. God. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. no fair okay the yeah. call's over <laughs> okay just kidding come up when you can come up when oh, we're you trying can. hon we're trying we're, we're trying to think of taking my mom up and do the right thing with her you know aging siblings that she'll probably if we don't bring her up maybe never see again um or doing the selfish it'd be great to see all of our friends to her so we're we're in the conversation right now so uh yeah, Make my me sister. a stop. I'm an hour out of Toronto to the west. On the way. You'll be on the way. Absolutely. On the way. Kelly, these yeah. don't look like Texas to me. What's going on? Well, the middle one isn't Texas. That's it's San Diego. Um, <laughs> San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you know? Because um, you told me in your, no. in your email. <laughs> yeah. Well, we played Swap the Boats this summer. Um, we bought one boat. The one on the right we bought and then we decided we needed a pontoon boat so that we could get his mom out there but she never will go with us anyway Aww. and our pontoon boat will only go 10 miles an hour because we don't have a good um, good motor so we have to get a, <laughs> a motor the other one went fast it was fun but um anyway it was fun and we went to uh um San Diego for like five days right when the um corona went low but they still required mask and everything there but yeah. we had a great time there it was um just beautiful and the weather was beautiful and um did you take this picture from a sailboat or we were no we were in a some a fishing boat I guess it is Mm -hmm. And we went on, you know, a couple of tours there and we went to, I can't, Michael could tell you, I think it's called Coronado Island. Coronado Island. Coronado Island. Coronado Island. Yeah. 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 There's a, a hotel there and the story behind the hotel is fascinating. Yeah. Beautiful. And um, he tried to get us reservations there, but apparently you have to make them a year or something in advance. 
<laughs> they thought he was crazy trying to call up a week or two before and saying. Yeah, they may just laughed at him. Yeah. Well, I love this though. I love this as your, yes, we're young and agile and need a fastball <laughs> or we could putz around drinking wine and coffee, you know, on the proper yeah. age boat. Yes. Um, in the big lake. So, uh, well, we aspire to follow in your footsteps, don't we, Cheryl? We what want was that other picture? Was that Michael working on something? Oh yeah, that boat. first boat, Michael and Dwayne, that first boat, the first day we took it out, um, some little thing broke right when we were all uh, thinking it was perfect because of course we bought these used boats and the first one the motor had frozen during that huge freeze and so Michael had to buy a different motor I can't remember it was not a boat motor <laughs> and uh, do some work to get it in there but then some piece of it slipped out and luckily he had one so <laughs> Twain jumped off the back and put it on. Only oh. Michael would carry spare parts to an engine motor that's a motor <laughs> yeah. or a boat that isn't a boat motor. Only Michael, you know, that's, that's how you roll, Kelly. Hey, and Kelly, I'm thinking this might be an entry into a, not, not an event tonight, but <laughs> this is like our transition to fall. So Kelly's starting to do fall crafts, right, Kelly? Yep. Right. <laughs> Joe asked me, what did I, what crafts did I do? <laughs> I didn't. The summer, but I did this one today. Yeah, well, you, I said, I said, what'd you do this summer? She goes, nothing, no picture. I said, no pictures. You bought two boats, you're on the water, you did new things, any crafts. She sends me all the picture boats, and then she goes, oh yeah, and I made this today. So anyway, that's our transition slide, Kelly, to a, a maybe a maybe a show on fall crafts or fall fall things. That's really it's nice. beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you, hon. Okay, Tom. Ooh, like that pretty part. Here we go. I tried to get a mishmash. I tried to make, you know, just a, you know, six or seven pictures from each of you that sent me 15. Um, so uh, clearly you guys had a good year with the garden, Tom, with, we did the raised beds this last year. Looks, looks stunning. Yes, we had a very successful garden. The beginning of August before we went to New York, we were blessed with all three of our grandchildren here. Oh. Uh, is uh, pre-med, our granddaughter, our second granddaughter uh, in uh, <clears throat> Spokane, Washington. She was here. Zachary, our oldest grandson, who is a rapper and singer, lives in Nashville. And he brought his uh, sweetheart, who happens to be Donna Summer's granddaughter. <laughs> and so that was fun. then we have our youngest, who is 14, which now lives in Vestavia Hills in Alabama with her parents. So we all got to be together. Ken took him down to the pond fishing. Look at and that. that is about the biggest catfish I have ever seen. <laughs> yes, we did eat catfish. <laughs> you said you, you took about five boring. of those out and had dinner, right? Like one of the yes, last nights they're all there? Yes. Have you asked Mandy, have you been there yet fishing to catch some of these big guys? Mandy, get to the property. Because Tom, if we don't catch the big ones, they eat all the little ones, don't they? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Open open fishing season at Sanctuary in the Woods. Go, Just Mandy, go. Get down there, Mandy. <laughs> and then Tom, here's, I got two, two sets of slides from your, uh, excursion up to New York. This is at my family farm. Uh, the farmhouse was built in 1845. Uh, I grew up here. We had registered Black Angus. Now my brother lives there, uh, is retiring. He still now has bought Darcel and I and my other two brothers out, and he is raising uh, Herefords, uh, it's all organic. My parents were all organic with their meats. And this is Darcel, <clears throat> Kevin, his wife, Kim, Ken, myself. And now I got to look. Who is that? <laughs> I wasn't sure, Tom. Darcel, oh, do you Justine. Know? It's Justine. Justine. Justine and Justine. Uh, my niece and my nephew, Jordan. Get holding and on those to those are Kevin and Kim's children. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. And what I, you know, I love this, Tom, when I, when I noticed putting up the pictures, it's of the same place. So this is with y'all and then the same, just cows are in the same place. <laughs> I, I just wondered yeah. if somebody did a magic trick and turned them into cows I just or wait. something or yeah. vice versa. They're cows. <laughs> yeah, they're people. <laughs> love it. And you were up there for like three weeks, Tom? Yes. Because either you got shorter one... or the corn got bigger while you were there. Oh, oh yes. Uh, we oh. ate all of our meals on the outside, on the porch. That was uh, in a cornfield off uh, near our farm. And I can't remember what the last one was. Oh, oh it's a picture that's of it. you and... Uh, uh, the other one's Waterfall um, in uh, Letra State Park. There are three major it. waterfalls through this. Uh, it's on the Genesee River, the only river in the United States that flows completely north and it empties out into Lake Ontario. Oh, wow. It's Yay. in the middle of Pennsylvania. And we learned something yet again. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Tom. It sounds like y'all had a wonderful, wonderful time. A load of, and you hadn't been yes, up in a couple of years, right? With COVID. So. Uh, we have not, some of my family for five years, wow. some for four, definitely for three, uh, since COVID. Yeah. Well, Everybody was, was vac vaccinated. Uh, we didn't have anybody that was not vaccinated. Uh, and we wore masks the whole time on our way up. I was so careful because we were meeting uh, my nephews and nieces and their children. And God forbid we got anybody sick. Yep. So we yep. kept our distance from all of the younger children. Good deal. Well, it looks wonderful. It just does. It looks really well. You all look so happy and rested, which I'm sure you're in need of. So... Kim, speaking of rested, I'm sure you got nothing done this summer, right? <laughs> well, we're not as interesting as everybody else. We did staycations, but um, we went swimming a lot and we took the kids tubing and the one with uh, my girls, all three of us um, and myself, we had taken a road trip um, just driving around because the middle one in the picture is getting her license and she needed time. so. Uh, right here. The three of us, yeah, that one. We just got back from just a road trip, so she could drive the whole way. Um, and then that one, we went tubing with Madison, the oldest, after she graduated. Um, and then the other ones, we're just spending hours and hours at the pool with everybody. That's so wonderful. And with awesome. all those female hormones raging, teenagers, God bless uh, you. Yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about that. All three girls, 18, 16, and 13, and they all have attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I love to see in all the water behind everybody and being outdoors, right? Everyone just had so much fun this summer being out of our houses. And um, yeah. yeah, to bring it along, uh, Edie, same things. Looks like you hit some water and you uh, look like a man that you must have won a contest with this monstrous fish <laughs> maybe not um well you know the uh, i don't know the contest within the family i don't know it was a it was a keeper and we cooked her up and right <laughs> there on the little farm we picked it up right down the little farm too. and uh yeah my my citified children my daughter watched me uh scale it and clean it and get it ready to cook and she said that's disgusting how do you know how to do that <laughs> like, I said I grew up doing this Absolutely. So this, is, uh, this is sort of my homeland so this is at my brother's cabin which is on Drummond Island um, which is the mo easternmost point of the upper peninsula of Michigan so yeah. you can row your boat to Canada from there yep um and so we just had a blast going up to his cabin and being on the beach and that big giant dog there is his chest. Yeah, look at that. It's like a bear. Yeah. Murph. Yeah, Murph. he's a bear. That's Murph. We, we spent a lot of the summer here and my brothers say, damn it, Murph. Anyway, <laughs> um, Murph is, is, Go ahead. 
seconds. Um, yeah, so on the so our summer was just we did two trips to Washington DC. We drove from Texas to the UP of Michigan and back and um um Zach and Zoe and I drove up to Michigan. Um, Mandy flew up a little later, but um, that was 4th of July and Zach and Zoe and I found this cave and um, we were in Kentucky. We stayed in this little house built in 1810. This town was part of the Underground Railroad. And uh, we spent the day 4th of July, we zip lined, we went into this cave where you can take a boat into the cave and we um, went and saw some fireworks and um, had a blast. Had a blast. Cool. Here's the yeah. DC side of one of your trips. I think this is all DC. Noting uh, almost. Yeah, the first almost. the one on the left with Kennedy, that's our first trip to DC. And then the one with us in the middle, that's the second trip, which was August last month. What month are we in? Yeah, we, we went in, in June and then in August. So on the left with Abe Abe there, um that was Kennedy's first real it was her first um airplane trip. And it was her first, you know, big vacation. And um, so that was real cool. What was bad was so much of DC was closed down because of COVID and you couldn't get tickets to the museum. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was this one? This one actually was your earlier trip, I thought, to, to no, DC. No, that was the second trip. And um, the second trip to DC was an event um, honoring women veterans um, at the Women's Memorial. So that's inside the Women in Military Service for America Memorial, which is, sits um, at the entrance to Arlington National Cemetery. And so I was selling my, I have rings designed specifically for women veterans and then some other stuff. Um, so that was a really neat event. And in fact, it involved quilts. We yeah. were all given oh, yeah. quilts um, by the organization Quilts of Honor, um, gave, um, 40 women veterans or so quilts honoring their service. It was just, it was their stunning quilts. They're beautiful. 75. They brought 75. It was 75 yeah, they for this 75 trip. The first trip out to California. But yeah. yeah. And then oh, there's wow. the church on the right. So on what, the right, what's that's on the right? Actually, that's actually in suburban Detroit. That is the Kirk in the Hills. That's me and, and my mom. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. I just got back from visiting the family. I'll ask for your prayers. My brother's recovering from a heart attack. Uh, my mom's only brother, only sibling, just died um, Sunday morning. Um, and yeah, out, up in Washington, state of Washington, I don't think mom's going to be able to get there because my dad is a full-time care situation. But um, that is the Kirk in the Hills, and it is the second largest, I think, Carolyn in the world. The Carillon is that bell tower. So when somebody's playing those bells in the bell tower, that's the Carillon. Yeah. My mom is a mu musician and she was a classical guitarist and a pianist. And she has, um, she's 85 now and she has been for about 10 years arranging guitar and organ music for the Carillon. So we went to that, um, there was a player visiting from New Jersey who is playing some of her arrangements in the Carol on that day. So that's why we're out there. Oh, wow. fabulous. Awesome. And that is, that is also where mom and dad will be, um, where their ashes will be interred when they've yeah. got a connection. Yeah, girl, we had a busy summer. I'm glad it's you did. I know, you get like four, pa three pages of this stuff. I'm like, I tried um, to get yeah, sorry about everybody. that. everybody. It's Ooh. the busiest summer ever in the history of summers. Um, wait, wait. Maybe because you're talking to a dog here and you think that's an event. So I, you're having dinner or you're doing shots with a dog. I'm not quite sure. Oh, so, yeah. Think it's shots. So I'm on the way that, yeah, we're not going in any kind of chronology here, but that's Greta. Yeah. Um, Greta has a particular problem with her throat where she has to eat sitting up in a chair. So um, our friends, Heidi and Amy, were at their home in Madison, Wisconsin. We fished off their dock. We goofed around on their party birch. Right and uh, their dog, Greta, sits up in a chair to eat and has to stay sitting up in the chair for 20 minutes, which Heidi made custom, especially, for 20 minutes after she eats for the food to all go down and digest. Uh -huh. so it on the left, as you know, we, we had the privilege and the honor of a round of golf. 
um, at American at Dunes. American yeah. Dunes, the Folds of Honor Golf Course um, that is managed by um, a friend of mine, Joe Bell, her brother. Yeah. <laughs> And his, my nephew is the head pro there. There you can see a little Jack Bear, Jack Nicholas course. Yeah. And we believe we were the first four female veterans to play the course. It just opened in May. And Edie and Mandy, you guys don't know this yet. Cheryl was just interviewed by Sports Illustrated um, yeah. from her perspective as a female veteran of, of playing the course, which I think you just played twice this year, Cheryl? Yeah, just twice. Play, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, so. Isn't awesome. that cool? So you'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know when, when she's published. You know, Please she did a great do. interview. Please and Mandy, who's, who's this, Mandy? And then let's let's keep on rolling here. You're... That's my abuelo and my abuela. So they are fully vaccinated, finally, because of our culture and the way, anyway, they're fully va vaccinated now. So that's their full vaccination picture as of last month. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So Grandpa's still doing good. We're still transporting drugs from different states for his Parkinson's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm very proud. They they both got vaccinated, knock on wood, no problems. And so yeah, yeah. Mandy was largely raised by her grandparents there, so not entirely, but largely. So wonderful. Yeah. Good, good. Well, thank you, ladies. You did have one monstrous summer. I tell you oh yeah, like. sorry. Uh, yeah, we did. I couldn't. It's okay. Like I'm gonna let Joe pick. So, <gasps> yeah, I did. I tried. So this is Ellen. Um, Ellen would love to have been here tonight. She's a big fan and big friend of Sanctuary. Um, but Ellen apparently, this is a lost luggage story, and she wanted to show her girl. Her, she's her body, her body positive attitude in the river on a raft with her grocery store swimsuit because apparently her luggage was lost en route to her trip. So it happens too much when you hang around us, and you never know. But I still she thought it was pretty a dang good. Doesn't she look good? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of looking good on the water or underwater, Kristen, where are you, girlfriend? Are you still here? Hello, I'm still there here. You are. Uh, yeah, this in, this in, happened like in the same day, right, Kristen? From what I understand, right? <laughs> so this, these were two weeks apart. I also had a very busy summer and very atypical feature. I only picked two trips to talk about and did not send you 20 photos, but um, I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, the, the one on the right is, uh, well, sorry, I'll do the one on the right first, is um, out in Breckenridge, Colorado, uh, where <laughs> learned that uh, Joby and Cheryl and I have something in common. Yeah, uh, you stayed the, in our hotel, the, in our time share, Valdoro. right? It's my second <laughs> time there. Um, last year, I went and my parents met me and, and then these are my two friends mm -hmm. off in the distance there. Uh, Jessica and David. Jessica's my travel buddy, goes lots of places with me. Um, we were looking for outdoor things to do as, you know, vaccinated, but still uh, trying to stay outside. So this was my first hike at over 12,000 feet. Um, I wish I could say I did well, but I wasn't really breathing. There were some, um, <laughs> there were actually a lot of uh, air quality warnings out that whole week. And especially that day from the fires, fires, yes. we decided to do it anyway. And uh, I would not recommend that. Um, but this was actually pretty early on in the hike. We walked past, uh, you know, two different lakes. This is McCullough Gulch that we did and, uh, did over, uh, I think, um, about seven miles and about a little over 1500 feet of elevation. Say, straight up and straight down, wow. right? Straight yeah. up and yeah, straight up and then straight back down. The down's almost as slow, just trying to figure out how not to throw your knees oh, yeah. out. But, um, yeah. so we did that. So we did see the glaciers and I, I didn't, I, I think my friend had the photo we did a little snowball fight when we got up to the end of the snow um not glaciers but you know bits of snow that are that are up there so we did go all the way up and then two weeks later uh, i went scuba diving in grand turk uh this is a if any of you are scuba divers beautiful so blue water divers is a scuba shop in new jersey you wouldn't think new jersey for scuba diving but uh she the woman in the middle here runs a travel division i think this is about the sixth trip i've taken with them um, she's taken to no longer publishing um, her trips publicly and going on an invite only while we're in COVID. So she finds those people who she knows are being safe, but are willing to go out. Um, missing one of the guys from our trip here, it was six people, went through all the hoops, how to be vaccinated, how to get a test before we went, how to upload it to the island's website to get a health visa to upload to the airline site where you can check in. 
had to get tested again <laughs> while we were there before we came home again, had to upload that to the airline site, had to, you know, so a lot of hoops um, and paperwork, but well worth it. Beautiful little boutique that we stayed at there that was just 20 rooms. Uh, we were six people. We actually, the first night made friends with um, a family that was sitting next to us. Turned out they were renewing their wedding vows and invited us to their wedding on the beach. So we're like, okay, ladies, did we all pack a skirt? Let's put that on the night we're going to a wedding. Uh, so, so scuba dive. So in two weeks, I was uh, 12,000 feet above uh, sea level. And two weeks later, I was uh, about 90 feet under sea level, I think was my, my deepest dive uh, that we had that week. But I had a great time. I got some good color. Uh, but oh god I shouldn't say that because now I gotta stay out of the sun right no no bad yeah. bad, bad, bad. <laughs> sunscreen lots of sunscreen coral lots safe sunscreen. sunscreen too I'll say yeah um, <laughs> well gorgeous have, shots Kristen yeah thanks absolutely thanks. <laughs> yeah we um we found out that we we share the same um abode when we're at oh, yeah Bracken right? Ridge Valdar Lodge if any of you have been, been in Brecken Ridge and need a oh. beautiful place to stay uh the Valdar Lodge is definitely one of, one of the Lodge, best in the yeah. area mm -hmm. Especially when you get the, the deck with the hot tub on it, right? I Preston? did. We did get the deck with the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. There's only we a few of those. The deck it's with life the hot changing. Tub. Yeah, it's life changing. Cool, cool. Good to see you, my friend. And yes. you're headed out again in November. You're hoping to go on a cruise. You might be the first I one. I am. Well, I should say, so summer, uh, summer's not over till tomorrow. So my mom is visiting right now. She's in the background. She doesn't want to come on camera. Hi, mom. Uh, she's here for a family wedding this weekend, but she'll hopefully be back again in November. And we'll be doing tall ship sailing out of St. Lucia. So we'll, wow. we'll see. The company has um, the tall ship company. It's like two dozen passengers. When I say tall ship, if you don't know what that is, but two dozen passengers on a sailing ship. Um, and they are meant to resume sailing for the first time since COVID started on October 10th. So we're going November 14th. Wow. Fingers crossed all as well. Be jumping through some more hoops with uh testing and paperwork and whatnot, but hopefully that will be worth it. And again, uh, just be out in the open air. So I'll let you know how that goes. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Good luck, my friend. And Mary Beth and Jan, you guys, same thing. You gave me so many wonderful pictures of all over the place. So uh, you were uh, on horseback and in the water. And uh, why don't you give us, give us a rundown here? Okay, well, we purchased a, a used uh, Hobie tandem kayak with the Mirage pedals so we can pedal it and it oh has gosh. a channel and we added the Amas, the sidekicks to, you know, help keep us upright. <laughs> and so we have had fun with that, exploring with that. And that's in Canyon Lake, Texas, which is a beautiful, beautiful lake, um, close, not too far from Austin. And then that's Jan on our youngest horse, who is only five and her name is Boom Boom. <laughs> and so she, she's out in the pasture with boom boom gorgeous and, and we did camping so that to the left camping. is um is me with sadie lou who um has mobility issues and cushings etc so she's she's babied a she's little pampered. bit and so it yeah. looks like she has a little, she has like a, um, a little hat, cap on. a little hat on, little, uh, what do they call that? A visor, like a little yeah. golf yes. visor. Yes. And we travel with a, with a stroller for her. Um, anyway, so she goes on all the trails with us, with our two boy dogs and male dogs. And she went kayaking. And she you. went kayaking <laughs> with Jean. <laughs> it's, I, I'm going to call you and have you teach me. Um, Bader was not quite the kayaker this summer. I tried. Um, it might be the, the calm state like this that she's only in in a deep sleep. But <laughs> we got to work on that one with you guys. Oh, goodness. And then you have, you have, I've got three more pictures, beautiful shots of you just being outside and inside. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, those, uh, the two on, on the left are in Lost Maple, Maple State Park, which oh, is uh, lovely. Um, in the Texas Hill Country, and um, we had just visited a cave on the left, and that's after coming out of the cave. That's at Garner, the cave. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's at Garner. Yeah, sorry. we went to Garner and Lost Maples on the same trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the middle one is at Lost Maples. Um, that was We rode our bikes on that trail, and I had a rather uh, tough tumble in some loose rocks, but <laughs> 
got back on the dang bike and kept going. And this was our reward. <laughs> yeah. um, yay. Um, and then uh, we are thrilled, always thrilled to have a barn full of hay. Wow. Um, and that's Jan sitting on top of the hay after it was delivered. <laughs> nice for you. Yeah. Nice yeah. for you. Beautiful. Looks Thanks. like it's an adventurous summertime. Yeah, and I'm relaxing. Yeah, yeah, it did look relaxing, but fun. I mean, still movement and yeah. camping and boating and and the horses. Um, yeah, we have a moment here. Just at nine o'clock, folks. We'll just do it quickly. We um, we try. Although, man, Jane Ann, you just kicked our ass. We try to golf. We actually golf quite a bit this summer, Cheryl and I, and lots of different events. Um, this is when Mandy and Edie came up, and like I said, here's the big flagpole over American News, the largest flagpole we think in the state of Michigan. Um, and this is the kind of the view from the clubhouse in the evening. This is num hole number 10 where there's a big lake. And then this is the flagpole out there as well. And um, if you, any of you um, care about golf and golf with a purpose, this course is called Folds of Honor, which is a, an organization started by now a friend of ours, um, Colonel Dan Rooney. Um, who basically every dollar of profit from this golf course, and it's a stunning golf course. We had Nancy Lopez and loads of people here for the grand opening in May. Um, but you can see the little, the little logo. Um, Dan is a professional golfer and a F-16 pilot. And every dime of profit goes to scholarships for kids from military folks who have either been passed or came home disabled and unable to you know, provide for their families. So it's a wow. wonderful experience and it really is an experience um, of golf. So our family's big on that. My little brother runs that. My, my nephew is his head pro. Uh, my, my niece speaks on tour for this organization. So we're committed to golf with a purpose. Dan calls it your most heroic round of golf. And it comes up little videos of the families who have scholars, kids on scholarship, you know, as you're playing the different holes of the course, just, just crazy, beautiful. Um, this is Cheryl and I at a much lesser course um, that was one of those wonderful ones. Nobody in front of you, nobody behind you, <laughs> pick some beer and hit a bunch of balls, you know, just a, a beautiful day here in Cadillac. A friend of ours gave us a free pass to this and we took advantage of playing. So loving getting out for golfing together. Um, other than that, we were moving as well. Uh, we bought two kayaks in the last summer. You know, you couldn't buy a kayak, a dog, or a bike last summer, right? Yes. So we, we, of course, bought kayaks, bikes, and dogs um, when you could. And uh, here's Rachel just popped up this last weekend. But Cheryl and I got these really cool racks um, for our kayaks, a, a nice stand in the backyard. So we said, the, the kayaks are right there. We're going to use them every work week. We're going to be in the water. So we've been spent some great time on the water. Um, we, we live on two adjoining lakes up here. This is my mom's house and a brand new road with a brand new bike lane. This is Cheryl because this was construction and dirt the entire freaking summer. Um, just honestly a play toy of large yellow gear. And then we just finished that up and are all growing grass again. But Cheryl was the first person in the bike lane after the guys painted this. Here's the painters right up here. So we were like fresh paint, man. Let's get in the bike lane. Um, also on the lake, there's a, a amphitheater here. We have friends that play music here. This is a play for 9-11. It was called um, The Guys. Two-person play, just a stunning um, writer helping one of the um, uh, fire chiefs to write eulogies for his guys. And we went to that on 9-11 and it was just uh, beautiful. Again, you can see this is on the lake. And at Sanctuary in the Woods, this is one of the things we're gonna model. We're gonna have an amphitheater like this. It's gonna be for either plays or music and things like that. And all these, um, the seats are actually built into the ground. And so there's grass in the middle. You can bring chairs and stuff, but these also, it kind of goes up in, in stages. So this is one of our goals of a beautiful see-through amphitheater at Sanctuary. And the rest of the time, if you followed me, you know um, this dog likes to be wet in this lake chasing balls and sticks and every weekend I spent time um, as a farmer at the farmer's market nothing I would have ever in my life um, said I would do but I met some phenomenal friends I'm working with a brand new product yes Bud and Dell I'll get you some of this stuff it's amazing um, I've been so busy this summer because 
in my world, I've had to kind of reinvent, you know, when COVID hit, um, I lost my job, went to zero overnight. And so it's been a summer of a lot of work and a lot of rebuilding. Um, but we've definitely had time to, to go out and have a good time as well. Whew. How about a round of applause for all of those stories and pictures? My Ooh. goodness. My goodness. Thank you, my friends. It's been a night and we are back at it. Oops, Cindy. Cindy must have left and came back again. Hi, Cindy. Um, goodness. I just want to remind you again, next week is going to be the book club, um, Firefly Lane. And Cheryl, I think you like that book so much you could probably read it in a week, couldn't you? Oh yeah, it's a it's a fast book. It's a fast read. It, it it's hard to put down once you get going on it. But, Our um, second book by Kristen yeah. Hanna, and then man, mark your Tuesdays in October and bring a friend. It's going to be, I think, a really neat series to kick things off. We actually have programming all through the rest of the winter set up, but we wanted to kick off October and let you all know exactly what we plan on doing. So it is nine oh six, which for the first time back in the. Saddle, not a bad evening, right? Almost nailed it right in an hour. Yes, Kristen. Any other comments, stories, thoughts, love from anybody? I Great just photos. want to say thank you, Joby, for putting it all together. Phew, that was a lot of photos to do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of photos. <laughs> well, thank you for sending in. We can never do something like this without you guys sending in the great photos and, and coming online telling the story. So <laughs> I hope you have had a summer of some good community, of some good outside, of some good rest. But we are committed again. We've really talked about this, um, the Sanctuary Online team. And um, we believe that even in a Zoom filled world that the community still matters and different kinds of community still matters. So we will be going full on Tuesday nights for this last quarter of the year. And then we may pop out and do some um, focus groups and see if you'd like to do some, if you'd like to keep on this once a week, if, that's a, if it keeps a good number of people, you know, if we're really serving the community by doing every Tuesday, um, then we'll do that. And really it's up to you and, and the folks that you bring to enjoy the programming, and then we'll take a look at things um, for first quarter of 2022 and then see how we can best serve you. Sound good? Sounds good. Always let us know. We love you so much. Prayers for those folks, for your family, Edie, for Ken, and for all those who are impacted in our world by so many things. Love you all. Thank love you. Thank you. Thank you. Night, Thank you. Good night, Good night, all. It was Thank great. You. Night night. night, night. Good night, to see you, Cindy. Everybody. You as well. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. I, I can see your face now. I, Cindy. I put cry on cry. makeup. Yeah, cry, cry. I'll give Ken a big hug for us. Yeah, there you go.